questions. I think you guys will find this interesting as well because I was prompted to uh, read upon it and um, it's quite interesting. But happy Valentine's Day. I got to find my, I got to find this. Okay. So I'm not going to give a, you know, I know a lot of churches are doing the little Valentine's Day messages and that's all good and wonderful and happy. And so, um, hold on a second. Where, oh, where am I? Okay. But let me read you this because it's, it's interesting. How many of you want to hear about Valentine's Day? Does anybody here know how Valentine's Day started? Anybody? <laughs> me neither. I, I, I mean, I don't, so that's why I looked it up. How many want to hear it? Or should we just go to the sermon? You guys have a right. It's your time. Yeah, it's a saint. Yeah. But does anybody, do you guys want to hear it? Or should we just go into the message? Because time is of the essence for you, not for me. Okay. So, <laughs> All right, let me see. There you go. I'll just read a little to you. Saint Valentine. Okay. Valentine's Day, blah, 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 occurs on the 14th. Came after Saint Valentine's, a mysterious saint. Uh, where did these traditions come from? Blah, blah, the legend of Saint Valentine. Uh, according to sources, uh, the history of Valentine's Day and the story is of a patron saint. It's, it's a shrouded in mystery, uh, celebrated. I'm going to get through all this stuff. St. Valentine was, as we know it today, contains vestiges of both Christian and ancient Roman tradition. But who was St. Valentine and how did he become associated with this thing? So uh, it says the Catholic Church recognizes at least three different saints, okay, that potentially were at the same time uh, who contended to. Uh, Val Valentine. They don't know which one exactly. One legend contends that Valentine was a priest, now listen to this, who was serving during the third century in Rome when Emperor Claudius decided that single men, which makes sense, uh, I can paraphrase a little, single men made better soldiers than married men. So he outlawed marriage. Now, that just shows you man's perversity. He's thinking about domination and therefore outlaw marriage, which is contrary to God's word. For this purpose shall a man leave his father and mother, be joined his wife, they two shall be one. God endorsed marriage. So this emperor, or whatever he was, Claudius, was against God. Okay, so here, here's what happened. So real, uh, realizing the injustice Valentine uh, defied Claudius. Thank God he defied him. Divide his Claudius and continue to perform marriages. <laughs> Amen. So there's a guy man, that went against the government at the time. And back then, punishment was a lot harder than it is now. Um, he, he said uh, he continued to perform these marriages uh, for young lovers. When, Val when Valentine's you know, just thinking about this, here's a good idea too. I mean, think about it. People still desired to be married back then, even though the king or whatever he was said no marriage, they could have just said, let's live together and fornicate all day long. Why get married? Instead, they said, let's get married. So this priest continued to, to endorse marriage, right? So Claudius, here it is, um, Valentine's actions were discovered and Claudius ordered that he be put to death. See, still others insisted that this Valentine was a bishop as well. He was, he was also beheaded by Claudius uh, outside of Rome, Claudius II outside of Rome. Other stories suggest Valentine may have been killed for attempting to help Christians escape harsh Roman prisons where they were often beaten and tortured. Christians beaten and tortured. Okay. According to one legend, an imprisonment, Valentine actually sent his first Valentine uh, greeting himself when he fell in love with a young lady, possibly his jailer's daughter, who visited him during the confinement before his death. Um, he wrote that letter from your Valentine, an expression that goes on today. Uh, Valentine legends, they're murky. The stories all emphasize the appeal of sympathetic, sympathetic heroic, and most importantly, romantic figure. Uh, by the Middle Age, though, uh, perhaps... 
thanks to his reputation, Valentine will become one of the most popular saints in France and England. This is where it all starts. Interesting. When, this is an interesting story. I mean, I, I found, I, I hope you enjoy as much as I did, because you can see actually how Christianity was working in many of these ways, you know, uh, still. While some believe Valentine's Day celebrated uh, in the middle of February, to commence the anniversary of his death, which probably occurred around 8270, after Christ died 270 years later. Others claim that the Christian church decided to place Valentine's feast in the middle of uh, a pagan holiday to Christianize the pagan world. Their pagan holiday was called Lupercalia. It, cel it was celebrated. Lupercalia, now, Guess what it was? Celebrated a fertility festival. It was a fertility festival dedicated to Phanos, the Roman god of art, art, uh, agriculture, as well as a Roman founders, Romulus and Remus. To begin the festival, now listen to this. This is after Christ died. Now you're about to say this is gross. So, um, to begin the festival, here you go. Uh, Luper, Lupersi, an order of Roman priests, would gather at a sacred cave where infants, Romulus and Remus, founders, believed to have been cared for by a she-wolf called Lupa. The priest would sacrifice a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. They would then strip the goat's hide, dip them in the sacrificial blood, go to the streets, and then gently slap women and crops in the fields with the goat hide. <laughs> Far from being fearful, Roman women would receive the touch of the hides because it was believed to make them more fertile in the coming year. Later in the day, according to the legend, all the young women in the city would place their names in a big urn. The city's bachelors each would choose their name, become paired for a year. Now, here's the perversity. They would just kind of go together for a year, and, and then if it didn't work out, they'd say, nah, we have to dig back in the urine the next year. These matches off sometimes ended in marriages. Uh, ultimately, Lupercalia survived the initial rise of Christianity, but was outlawed, as it was deemed unchristian at the end of the 5th century when Pope Gaseus declared February 14th St. Valentine's Day. It was not much. It, it was not until much later, however, that the day became definitely associated with love. During the Middle Ages, it was commonly believed in France and England that February fourteenth was the beginning of the birds' mating season. <laughs> so the English poet Geoffrey Schaffer was the first to record this uh, day as a romantic celebration in his uh, thirteen seventy five poem Parliament of Fowls, writing uh, this was sent on Valentine's Day. Uh, let me see. Ultimately, uh, by the oldest known Valentine still in existence today was a poem written in 1415 by Charles Duke of Orleans to his wife while he was imprisoned in the Tower of London following his capture at the Battle of Agincourt. The greeting is now part of the manuscript collection in the British Library in London. Several years later, it was believed that King Henry the V, what's that, five or ten? Fifth, hired a writer named John Lydgate to compose a Valentine note. Uh, so, and then it goes on and says, who is Cupid? Cupid was some sort of Greek god, blah, 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 cards. And, but isn't that kind of interesting, a day that everybody celebrates and they don't really have a full diagnosis of it. So I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, but what you could see is this. What I saw here is sometimes there's copies in the pagan world like that, that dipping of the blood, smacking people, because that's what Moses did. Read that in Hebrews, uh, I think it's uh, 10 or 9, where Moses sprinkled the people with the blood. But he wasn't sprinkling them for the purpose of fertility. He was sprinkling them for the purpose of cleansing and purification. So you can see, this is interesting, just the idea of blood the significance of it in even the pagan world. So praise God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank God for the blood you and I've been dipped and washed and purified in. 
Romans, uh, uh, Revelation 1, 5, unto him whoever loves us and washed us, amen, cleansed us, right, by his blood, made us kings and priests. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're, we stand before him like as white as snow. Amen. All your filthy unrighteousness is washed. Glory to God. And you can just take a fresh dip every day. Praise God. Because when you, back to what I want to say now is, when you and I confess the blood, the power of what that blood has done in, in eternity hits the earth, comes upon you right then and there. That's why I take communion pretty much every day. Every day. I acknowledge it. It says as often as you do it. Thank God if you want a fresh. People love feelings. I'll tell you, whatever act you do enough will eventually break out and create. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to just say feeling. Whatever you do repetitiously will create an experience. See, it's the act of faith. Right act will produce the right conditions, the right actions, right? It's like, uh, you don't think your way into victory. You got act, 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 act. And the only act you and I need to do, the first act is the act of faith. How do you release your faith? By speaking and doing, speaking and doing. But when it comes to the blood, the speaking part of acting is the most predominant aspect of you releasing your faith, the speaking. That's why Jesus said, who will say, the principle of the law of faith. Release the law of faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. And then that fresh feeling, like you could feel like you got born again. Remember when you first got born again? You're like, oh man, this is wonderful. You hit a pink cloud. You can hit a pink cloud every day if you want. It's your choice. If you'll invest the time, just like I told was telling Caleb yesterday, your commitment and investment, and, and the, the scripture teaches whatever a man sows, that he will reap. He that sows to the spirit. So if you will sow, but the devil doesn't want you to sow. He just wants you to think you can plop a seed in there one time. And although it'll grow and produce something, if you don't water it, if you don't continue to throw other seeds in there, then you won't develop that bedrock faith. You know, like when I take communion, I really feel changed. Like literally, you know, like people that feel when they smoke a joint. I feel lifted up. You know, people get high and they're like, you see their eyes are all glossed over and they're like, yeah, yeah. When I pray in tongues and take communion and read the word, I feel like, yeah, yeah, I agree with that, God. Amen. I am the righteousness of God. I am your workmanship created in Christ Jesus. I am raised up, seated in heavenly places. Yep, the love of Christ controls, dominates, and governs my life. Yep, I'm reigning and ruling this life. But see, if I'm not taking my medicine, then I'm like, man, this sucks. This man, I don't feel good. I hate that person. That what a piece of garbage that person is. Um, you know, uh, you know, or or you know, I deserve what I deserve my cut in life. Or you know, see, when I don't take my medicine, when I don't take my medicine. You know, you're gonna need something else to fix you. You'll need some money. You'll need a. You'll need a this. You'll need a that. Whatever the devil hurls your way. And the thing about the devil, he studies. He studies each person. He knows what he knows what to push in their life. See, the devil ain't gonna push no drugs in my life because he knows I've already been through that washing machine. But he'll put he can try to push other stuff like temptation, you know, to be angry, you know, to be impatient. No, serious, that's what he tries to push. Like I caught myself, I was like, no, 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 devil. Because sometimes you just you know, you get challenged with mentalities of people. And it's like, you just think, man, I about had enough of that. And you're ready to lay into them and not with a godly way. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, so that's a temptation for me. You know, because you're dealing with so many people. You're dealing with people all the time, whether it's in church or in different, you know, in different things, you know. And sometimes people are just, we, they're just bloviating. You know what I mean? So you get my point? So that, that's a temptation for me. Just like, you just want to go, oh, man, shut up. You just want to say that. Just, man, shut that pie hole up. You don't know what you're talking about. You're wasting my, you just want to go off on something, but you can't. It doesn't work like that. How many of you know? 
You can be right at heart, but you cannot express yourself like that. It's out of order. It's out of love, right? Or like, can I be honest with you? Yesterday I was getting, I took Caleb, we went by, uh, we were coming down to Pasquale's after, after practice, and I was going to go by and see not Joe, but his, his uh, uh, brother-in-law, whose son was supposed to be there. But anyway, so I'm standing there, and, and I walked down the block, and I got me a little, uh, you know, a little breakfast bagel, you know. And I walked up the block, and I was standing on the corner eating it. And everybody on this beautiful, hot, sunny day had their masks on. Except me, and I'm standing on the corner, and I'm just like eating, and I'm just like, all of a sudden, I just like, I want to see one person without a mask. And then this guy comes up, and I couldn't tell if he had a mask on, and I could see him look over, like, and I'm thinking, oh, man, just don't even say it, dude. Because I'm a, I'm a, I was thinking, dude, you're not going to come in here. You know, I'm, I'm going to eat my sandwich. Don't, that was my mind was telling me. So, th like, the devil was trying to get me to load my guns. Get my point? But I didn't. I was like, no, 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 no. See, he's always trying to pull you into sin. The sin isn't, see, it's the sin of the heart, though, to get out of love. So, and sometimes love, you just keep your mouth shut. Mind your business. Keep eating. Eat your little sandwich. Enjoy the sun. You want a mask by on the bicycle? Go ahead. I don't have an opinion. But don't interrupt my life. So you understand my point, but the devil's always looking to get conflict. He's always looking to sow strife. He's always, and people think, it, it, look, this is a very important aspect in your life. As soon as you turn on the TV, there's conflict. Brady threw a trophy. I want him to apologize. No, I'm serious. Tom Brady threw a trophy. Tom Brady was drunk or, 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 you know, this, this, that, there's so much conflict out here in the world right now, you know? Or uh, so you and I have to be wise as a serpent, you know, and harmless as a dove. You got to stay in the, the observation tower. And when it's appropriate, speak. But when it's not, be quick to listen. <laughs> slow to speak and slow to anger. Because the devil will just get you. He'll tax you. Amen. And you don't want him, we don't want to say, amen, the devil tax you, but the devil will tax you. And what, how he taxes you is this, he just drains you. He's a drainer. Amen? He'll drain you. And you don't even realize it sometimes. And so you've got to stay filled. But look, you can pray two or three hours. You ever notice you come out of prayer for an hour or two, and there's always someone there waiting, like to give you a problem or challenge you. As soon as you come out of the word or prayer, there's always something to like pull you into the flesh. And this is where you and I have to constantly cultivate, constantly reinforce. No, 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 no. Make active decisions to not allow your mind to roam. Because once your mind roams, your mouth starts <laughs> chirping, you know, and you got to be observant. Very cautious in this hour. Not scared, but cautious. You know what I'm talking about. It's like walking through a minefield if you're in the military. You're like, you just don't walk in and go, because it's a minefield out here. You know, all kind of stuff going on. The devil got mines. And of course, it may not kill you, but it, 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 it could, uh, it could damage what you truly want, right? What is it you truly want? To be with God, but define that while you're on earth. What's your purpose? Walking in love. But why do you walk in love? To glorify God? Fruit. But why do you guys walk in love? To command. All those things are true. But the greatest reason why you walk in love is because what 1 John 4 says. Because in this communion and union with him, love attains perfection. And when perfection wells up, so you're already perfect in here. Look, Ephesians uh, 1 verse 4 and 5 says, you're already perfect, holy without blame before him in love. 
But in order for what's in here to go, the, for the elevator to go up, right? You're going to have to exercise faith, right? Because that's what has to happen. You don't live up here all the time. Your head can be in conflict with what you believe. Just like I read you that, that, that thing, what James Stalker said, that in the fall, there was a, 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 a displacing, that man's soul and body became the predominant ruling force. But Jesus restores back that dominion to the human spirit so that everything has a proper order and must be in subordination. How many of you know? You have to subjugate your mind. You have to subjugate your body. You have to control your tongue. Come on now, it's what James says. You got to control that tongue. It's full of deadly things. But at the same time, the tongue is full of wonderful living things. But you choose what you want to do. Bring destruction into your life or do you want to, or do you want to speak life? Amen? The mouth of the righteous is a well of life. Amen? So you got to guard yourself. Even the news will bait you. The devil will use the media to pull your mind into. You know, maybe you believe in Trump, but he'll they'll he'll they'll start coming, and the devil will say, "Look at all," this, and pull you or Biden or whatever. They'll pull you, so your mind begins to fixate and begin and and go down that road. And then all of a sudden, what the devil's starting to do is he's starting to set up little structures in your system of thinking. I see it with a lot of people. Look, I I, I look at a lot of comments comments of what people believe in. and you got all these people just so much imbalance in a lot of people's christian walk and you just see it because they don't know the word they don't know the word they don't have a balance how many understand what i'm saying know the word they don't have a balance okay praise the lord go over to um go over to matthew how about you go to matthew i'm just going to share very briefly couple minutes we'll get out of pause we'll get out early today but this is kind of what i see going on some of it matthew and then go to first uh, john 4 just because i want to read you that since i quote it to you uh do, 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 matthew is it where are we at eight nine let me see hold on give me two seconds uh right there matthew eight but i want to read first john to you just so you understand so you guard yourself come on now I'm not talking about being afraid of everything. I'm just saying, guard yourself. First Peter says, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. You know what I mean? Sober. It's not talking about alcohol. Sober in thinking. Amen. Being alert, being aware. And how do you, how, so that's why you and I have to practice his presence. You know, here's a good example. Great example. Oh, I should. And I'm not lifting up my own theology, but I'm going to give you a good example about this real quickly. Oh, I wish I could give it. Hold on. If I, if I can find it, I want to show you because this is so interesting. You guys will like this. Here it is right here. You'll like this. Okay. Watch. This is, you just see the, the different. Let's see if I can find it. They posted this the other day, and I thought, man. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't charisma. It was a church. Church leaders or something. So anyway, I'll tell you. Church leaders. Here we go. Maybe it's there. If it ain't there, I'll wash it. I can tell to you, but. Okay, forget it. So. I'll just tell you, and then we'll get to this love. This is why you got to guard your mind. Okay, there's a, a lady who is LGBT, but her record just blew out. What's the other lady that she's been real popular? Uh, Engel, Laura Daggle, Daggle, Engel. What, what's her name? No, no, no. She's a singer. <laughs> Shows where you've been studying. Laura. She's been singing. She's an artist. She sung a bunch of songs. Lord Dangle, Dingle, Dangle. What's her name? Lauren Dangle. Thank you. So her album has been like two years on the charts at number one. Well, so apparently this LGBT 
lady, young, not young late, lady, well, she, that's what she claims, says she's a Christian, but her, but her song is hit the overpass Laura Dangle's album now. And so, um, and her album's all about what it's like with a lot of doubts and this and that and all this stuff about being a Christian and da 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 all these songs. And so the question was, was then all these people are like, well, she ain't saved and this and that and da 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 and everybody's just chiming in. And it, is it really a Christian album? And and then you just listen to all their thoughts and then I go, none of these people have a clue, you know, because obviously this person's confused but the fact is and they're like repent and this and that it's like here's the reality for that 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 per, that lady um number one you know what her main problem is as i put in there i put first problem is you're questioning the wrong person you never question god there's nowhere in the bible you see the question of his existence Matter of fact, Hebrews eleven six tells it without faith, it's not possible. Please, he that comes must believe he is, and he's a rewarder. So the fact that you're doubting, you know why you're doubting? Let me keep it real with you. Do you know why people have doubts? Who wants to know why people doubt so much? Huh? Who wants to take a guess? Come on, help me, because you're it's your time. I got all day. We're gonna get to this word. You know why people doubt so much? Unbelief and doubt, the same thing, but why? Come on, go look at the, the found doubt and unbelief are, are just, yeah, why? As, as a Christian, I'm talking about, not an unbeliever. When a, when a Christian doubts God's abilities, his hand, his, is he there? Is he not there? Did he leave? Why do they doubt? You could, you, they, they don't know him, their minds aren't renewed, but, but what's the real reason? Double-minded, out of love. All right, keep going. Just, you know what the reason is? Because they, they're not getting what they want. They're selfish. He didn't heal me. He didn't give me money. He didn't give me that girl or that boy. He took my child. He did this. He did that. Flesh. It's all earth. It's all earthly stuff. Can you see it? It all has to do with human emotion and body. The flesh. It's all flesh. There's nothing spiritual that they doubt for. They doubt because of their human existence and experience isn't fitting in to a mold that they heard some preacher tell them. So now they become in opposition to God and they doubt and they're insecure and they waver, they teeter, they toddle. They, they, they're not sure. All because of the earthly realm. Every issue. They don't feel good. If God was in charge, I'd feel better. Feelings. My bills aren't paid. I'm this. I'm that. Why am I fat? Why am I small? Why am I black? Why am I Asian? Why am I white? Why, why can't I be the president? <laughs> you know? Just, just a bunch of whys and, you know, and, and just flash. Nothing to do with living in God. I'm telling you, get this revelation. And that the, her ignorance is the sin of all sins. It is the sin of all sin. So when people need to repent, it's not because we're, we are killing too many babies and all that kind of stuff. But they need to repent because behind killing babies is a distorted twisted dark heart that doesn't believe in the existence of a, an amazing system created ruled and influenced by a creator it says i can throw away that because it's not a living being so it's not just throw, the throwing away which most christians focus on they focus on just the outward it, yes, don't throw babies away, correct. But behind that is a heart that doesn't believe that you and I were created out of an unseen realm. That the word became flesh. That God spoke you and I into existence and set into operation a supernatural system where when a man and woman come together, something from 
that comes together and merges and is knit and a child comes forth. Life is given. They don't believe in that supernatural system, but they're, but I was going to almost make a critical comment, but, but their warped minds believe in a stupid phone and a Google and a Twitter and, and a, but they can't believe and, and they run around and hug each other and they celebrate when someone has a baby, but they'll vote for abortion. It's my right flesh and i'm not preaching abortion i'm preaching principles of the heart so the heart the heart of man right that's why so this lady and then so all i said was in this thing i said number one number one lots of those people are like look people have all kinds of distorted and sensual ideas because they don't understand who they are in christ their identities are all earthly. They don't know the love of the Father. And the reality is, is people are going to have feelings. People are going to have emotions. People are going to have this. But if, you're, if you understand human nature, you minister to the person's heart. Yeah, that person needs to get up out of that lifestyle. Because God didn't create a, a woman to be with a woman and a man to be with a man. Duh. Just look at the physical makeup of it. <laughs> it's quite simple, isn't it? Now, it doesn't matter if you have a child like that, a cousin like that. Or, it doesn't matter. It's not about, it's just, it, look at, but if a person wants to stay that way, then what you do is you pray for that individual. But if they're a Christian struggling with those issues, you help them, walk them out, give them enough revelation, teaching, grace, mercy, friendship, carry the burden with them, walk them into liberty. Of course, they have a part to play. They got to want to let it go, don't they? You know, they got to want to let it go. You know, and explain to them, it's not about heaven or hell. It is about a quality of existence, isn't it? Quality, it's not about heaven. You don't go to hell just because you're gay. You go to hell because you're an unbeliever. You're a, you're a doubter. Jesus ain't the Lord. So these are all things that people are dealing with. But see, you see so many opinions coming in and you're just like, man, folks, what Bible are you reading? Either to the left or the right. Why is it they can't walk in the middle? Homosexuality is a sin just like any other sin. Don't endorse it. Don't celebrate it. It's, it's, it's not right. But I'll tell you this, you don't have to start a debate over it. That's not the core issue of someone's life. That's not what you want to oppose. You don't want to go to a drug addict and oppose his drug addiction. You don't want to go to someone that has a problem with gambling and oppose it. You want to deal with the heart issue, which is their loss. If they really knew who they were in Christ and the love of God, they would lay aside sin and wait. You can't get no one to stop sinning. You can tell them all day long, look, man, you're a sinner. You're going to die and go to hell. You know what you're going to do? All you're going to do is aggravate their pride because you got to remember you're dealing with a fallen nature. All you're going to do is activate more sin. How many of you know that? How many of you know what the what the scripture says? In, in, in Romans uh, blah, 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 Romans six, sin leads to iniquity. But when you receive the doctrine, anyway, look First John, then we'll go over there. But what I'm saying is you. You have to walk people out of liberty because the devil's waiting for you to, waiting for you. That See, but here's what the church has done. Then we'll move on because I'm kind of ranting. The church has done this. Love, 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 love. But love without truth ain't real love. It's not real love. Here's what human love is. Human love is this. Love, love, but I leave you in that condition because my true love I, I, I can't help you eternally out of the snare and the fallen nature that you're in. To truly love somebody is to give them the truth. Look, brother, I love you, but where you're at isn't God's plan. And your life will continue to be in, 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 in a continual downfall and eventually collapse. Eventually will collapse. 
How many of you know that? But you're called to love someone. You're not called to be their judge. If a person wants to live a wayward life their whole life, let them. You can't stop it. All you can do is tell them the truth. Right? The Lord forgives you. He'll continue to cleanse you. He'll lift you up. He'll, he's got a better plan and a better future for you. Right? But if a person wants to live in, I mean, why would you want to live in, in, in darkness? Well, you never taste it and seen that the Lord is good. I don't go back to drugs and drinking and a crime and a this and a that. I, I have no desire for the world. Because once you walk with God, once you experience an intimate walk with the Father, why would you ever want to go back to pride and selfishness? Why would you want to go back to strife and arguing and bickering? Why, why would you even want to drink that cup? Why? Why would, why would people want to drink that? You know, why, would, why wouldn't I want to rescue this brother? And, and why? So I look at these things and I go, these people are just, they amaze me. You've got to have the work of Jesus to be able to affect anybody's heart ever. Amen. You never endorse sin, never validate it, but don't condemn people because the reality is, is there's probably an element of sin in everybody's life. See, my sin may not be drinking, smoking, fornicating, lying, cheating, stealing, but it could be other things. Impatience. Selfishness, right? Irritable, you know, not being gracious at times. How many understand what I'm saying? I could have a sharp word, a critical word, an unforgiving attitude, right? Can have all those things, a lack of understanding. So these are all inward things that, are, that we all deal with and we'll deal with our whole life. Now, as we grow with God, we, those things fall off. They fall off. But there's a lot of believers right now in the world that, are, that and I'm just like, oh, my God. Obviously, that, I don't even know how that lady's album got to number one. I don't think it's the hand of God. You know what I think it is? Solic. Solic realm. How many of you know what I'm saying? When you have music that affects people's souls. You know what I mean? How many of you love music and worship? It took me some time to get to this place. I don't even need worship anymore. Like music-wise, I don't. I can pray in tongues and by faith confess my way into the presence of God. But it took some years to get to that place, to be honest. Because I'm a great music lover. Like I got so many, I got more CDs than half people you know. I got Apple phone. I got more worship music. Worship, worship, worship. But I'll tell you this, I can remember a, a, a leader of mine, he's like, you ever notice how all those churches, they have to do a lot of worship when they have speakers? Because people are carnal. It helps them. But the reality is we have to trust more in the Holy Spirit than we do in the worship team. Worship teams in America have become like Hollywood stars. Do you understand? And lots of them aren't even in deep with God. There's a lot of carnality. Jesus never had a five-piece worship team. You know what they did? There's one place in, in Scripture says they sung hymns. They started singing psalms. Jesus and his crew. Interesting. Now, thank God for worship, but it shouldn't be set up as an idol. We have to be able to pray. Look, I always call this pray yourself into a stupor. Pray yourself. You know what a stupor is? Like when someone gets so drunk with alcohol, they're like, pray yourself into a Holy Ghost stupor. Amen. And I'll tell you, if you will, your life will change. Now, let's look at this real quick. I said, wait, we got to hurry up. I'll give you this thing and go. We'll spend a little time in a couple minutes in prayer. First John, just want you to get this, this part. First John 4. In verse uh, 16 and 17, I'm reading from the Amplified. And we know and understand and recognize we're conscious of by observation and experience. We believe and we put faith and rely on the love God cherishes. Every person in this room should have this in their heart, number one. Period, period, period. You must put faith in and rely on the love God has for you as a, as a son, as a daughter. 
That is your foundation period. If you ever go away from that, you'll be a cranky little Christian. You'll be like self-righteous. You'll be like uh, monitoring sin in the world. You must always shower yourself in this truth. This truth will preserve you from the devil. It'll keep you joyous. It'll keep you happy knowing how much the Father loves you. Amen? Uh, First John, I'm in the Amplified. 4 verse 16. Put faith in. How many of you know? Look, look. I just put my phone in my back pocket. Take your faith and put it in the love of God. Put it in the love of God. And then it says, then it says, put your faith in God's love. And he who dwells in love and continues, dwells in love, dwells and continues in God. And God dwells and continues in him. In this union and communion, here it is. Love is brought to what? Completion. And attains perfection within us. That we may have confidence for the day of judgment. And assurance and boldness to face him. Because as he is so we in the world. See. In this communion and union with him. You have boldness. Confidence. See if you're walking and dwelling in love and in union. You're like father. And you know what happens when you're in that union with God. You ain't walking around in a bunch of fear. The fear is driven out, right? There's all kinds of fears that come into our life. Fear of economics, fear of relationships, fear of, you know, I'll miss out, fear of this, fear of that. It's all kinds of fears, man. And, and a lot of Christians don't even recognize it. There's lots of small little fears. I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of stuff. We have to overcome stuff. Fear of the dentist. No, I'm serious. I can admit it, man. I, I deal with that fear. I mean, I don't know why it's there. Probably because when I was a kid, I went to the dentist and they used to work on my teeth and they knocked me out and all this. And I was just like, oh, no. Remember back in those old days, you, they put that mask on you and you just look at it and it smelled like stinky cigars. It was the old gas. Remember the gas? Yeah, I remember that. They used to come with, huh? And it smelled like gas. And I'd be like, they'd be like, breathe in. And I was like, breathing in and a stinky rubber mask because they never changed them. And this horrible. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, and this, the whole experience. So I was doing good for many years. But, you know, so really right now, I take care of my teeth. I water pick them because I was like, I don't want to go to the dentist. <laughs> but I have to go. So there's all kinds of little fears that you got to deal with in life. All right, now I'll go to Matthew. Oh, I said we are going to close. We'll close. But read that. And then the next verse says what? Verse 18, there's no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full-grown, perfect, perfect, complete love casts fear out, expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of torment and punishment. He who is afraid is what? Read this right there in Amplified. He is afraid is not what? Nope. Nope. In the Amplified. He that's afraid has not reached the full maturity. Now, I'm going to give you a note in this church. That is your quest to reach the full maturity of love. And you have not reached that. Nor have I, but I could tell you this. I pursue it as such and have for many years. That's why I can give you like a bunch of scriptures all on love. Love, 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 love. And that's why I go to Bible school. I say, give me five scriptures on love. They're like, mm, 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 mm. like, so in our church, I expect you to know that, especially if you've been here for a while. You should be able to go in Colossians 3 right there, 3, 12, 13, 14. 1 Peter 4 and 8, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 12, 31. Uh, you, you should go to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, right? You should go to uh, Ephesians 5. I mean, you should be able to go Philippians. I mean, chapter 2, you know, that you be knit together in love under the full assurance of under. There's so many verses if you will focus on those. You'll always dwell with God and you won't have a lot of fears. It's just as simple. It's that simple. Matter of fact, Second Peter says, 
um, when you walk in love and he that perfects these things, he'll never stumble. So we can just say this, and I'm not using Pat. If this brother's stumbling and struggling, go, brother, you're out of love. No, I'm not. Hey, okay? brother, you're out of love according to scripture because you're stumbling and fumbling and you're out of love. No, I'm not. People tell you, no, I'm not. I'm not out of love. I know love. I'm walking love. No, you're not. Because the Bible says perfect love, you're stumbling and fumbling and struggling. You're out of love. They're going to they're gonna fight you tooth and nail. But then you turn them over to the Bible and you go right here. Here it is. Nick. What are they going to say now? I'll tell you what most a lot of people do. They side with their own emotions more than the scripture. If a person comes to you and shows you the word, you should go, absolutely right, brother. I'm wrong. That quick. Bam. That quick. Never argue against the word. You are in trouble and don't realize it. You're no more better than the unbelievers when we do that. How many said I said when we do that? Don't do that. Huh? No, saying when when we share the word with somebody and they fight you and say no, nope. because okay, hit flash. Yeah, here's Matthew real quick. Look at Matthew real quick, and then we'll go. I feel like this is a Matthew eight. No, you don't need you don't need to beat people up with the word. Here's how you beat people up with the word. I remember a lot of people did this, like with people that were struggling with homosexuality or they were homos homosexuals. They go, "Hey, Jesus loves you," and 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 then blah blah blah, and then person goes, "But I'm not going to receive." And then they kind of say, "No, I don't want it." And they think, "All right, well then when you die, you know you're going to hell." <laughs> it's like, dude, I'd be like, that may be true, but that's not what you want to say. You just tried to share some. Leave it as a seed. Whether it's a person with homosexuality, sin, drugs, whatever. You get my point? I'm just saying, if you can't get somebody to come to Christ, don't hammer them down after. Just leave them. Let the Holy Spirit work. Let the Holy Ghost work. Now, you guys do that. I'm saying, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about like a lot of people that you and I know. Amen. They either validate them. They just have a hard time just sharing the truth and moving on. You can share the truth in love. You don't have to compromise. Sin is sin. It's wrong. Sin is wrong. Inequity is wrong. It'll destroy your life, won't it? It'll, it'll steal from you. It'll hinder you. You know? You know? And here's the reality. We want people to come to church, but they don't have to come to church, do they? Because if you don't want to come to church, guess what? There's no point. You're just doing religious duties, religious gymnastics, right? All right. Now, and that ain't going to help you anyway. Here you go, Matthew. I, I want to read this part right here. Matt, Matt, Matthew 8, 23. And when he entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Behold, there arose a, a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to perish. And he said to them, it's all right. You're walking in fullness of faith. You're blessed. You're great. I still love you. <laughs> no. Why are you so fearful? I mean... I, I don't have time. You guys don't want this. You're ready to go. You owe oh, you have a little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there's a great calm. And, and then they marveled and said, what manner of man is this, that even the sea and wind obey him, or they obey the word? Now, here's something to think about. I just wrote a couple of thoughts down. Um, it says, the disciples followed him. Now, do you ever notice when you truly decide to follow Jesus, a storm arises? But you, people tell you when there's a storm in your life, that is bad. A storm sometimes means that you're doing something right. Now, self-created storms, as Peter says, when you're a busy body and other people's matters or doing things you shouldn't or opening the door to sin and a storm comes, well, that's your fault. But sometimes storms come when you commit and consecrate to do the will of the Lord. Jesus said, follow me. And follow ain't just like, that's not what Jesus meant. Look that Greek work up, because I did look it up at one point. 
It means to commit and consecrate one's life to that. So he says, follow me. A storm arose, and it says, and, and someone have the Amplified on that in verse 24? Didn't you have an Amplified? Great. So notice this, this violent tempest. Violence. See, no one likes violence that goes on. But the devil wants to release violence to destroy, to rob, to undermine, to blot out your life. But you don't see it as that. Most Christians don't see it. There's an enemy, man. Wake up. Wake up. That's what this church needs to do in this nation. They want to blame Republicans. They want to blame Democrats. They want to blame this. They want to blame it's Satan. Okay, yeah, I know. So you're you're chiming some out. We, of course, we need an awakening. But the point is, you can't have an awakening until you begin to see clearly. And you can see that these people were on the boat and a storm hit hard. And they lost their bearings, so to speak. Let me let me hear up my fingers. It says, and this is amazing because this is how a lot of people are. I'm talking about Christians. See. I'm not concerned about the worldly guy. I don't expect the non-believer to act like a Christian. I don't expect him to be holy. I don't expect him to pray. I don't expect him to fast. I don't expect him to give. I expect the worldly person to be selfish, rebellious, drinking, looting, lying, cheating, stealing. I don't have an unreasonable expectation from the unsaved. You know, I expect the believer to have a standard, not the world, right? So there, it doesn't mess me up when I look at the, un, the unsaved because I don't expect them. How can they live at a standard of love and of, uh, uh, of righteousness when they don't even have the Holy Ghost? You and I can't even do that. I can't even fight off a piece of cheesy garlic bread without the Holy Ghost. In my youthfulness, I had more vigor, but now I'm like, Lord, you got to help me because, boy, I'll tell you, that, that cheesy garlic bread's calling out. And you think, well, that's weird. Well, I'll tell you what, there's stuff calling out in your life. I'm not called out by drugs, alcohol, lust. I, I'm not called out, but called out to a piece of cheese. <laughs> okay. But I know that, so I got to watch it. I need to shred some serious weight right now. No, I have to. It's just you got that point now. You know, where I got to, I got to lose this because it's number one, I can feel it badly. And then number two, the Lord has already instructed me. So at that point now, it's like, you need to move out what God tells you to do. There's no more, you know, cushioning and doing what you want. You know, I can eat like a pizza and a garlic bread in one setting and it's a okay because you're going to burn it off at 25 or 30 years old. Don't work like that as you get up in your fifties. You know what I mean? So, and it's important. That's just as important as someone taking a drink of alcohol. And getting drunk and get drunk on a piece of cheesy garlic bread. All right, here you go. We'll close. I don't want to go, but here, I'm going to close the Bible. Then I know we'll close. I'll, close. I'll read these thoughts later. But um, these waves that violent try to submerge your emotion, you know? And what amazed me is they went to Jesus. Now, come on, just think for half a second. I'm pulling this earpiece out. Okay, no, I'll keep it. They went to Jesus. Don't you care? I mean, just think for a minute. Stop reading it religiously. See, it's easy to read religiously. Like you read it and you're like, oh, you kind of just blow it off without letting the Holy Spirit give you the depth of the human condition in the middle of the rocky boat where the waves were covering the whole boat. Now, I've been doing some research, but you probably could why the Lord led me to this. I've been watching on YouTube big ships at sea for some reason i don't know like where they're going up on these hundred foot waves <laughs> and you just see the bow go Rrr! i've been watching these things i don't know why i'm just you know i'm educating myself on different things and i'm like my god or like watching some of these these uh, surfer people like surf these waves where if they dot they fall they're dead like i'm talking about hundred foot waves like i mean even a wave this big is pretty scary. A wave this big is pretty scary. It doesn't seem scary right now, just visual, but 
if you were in the ocean in a wave that big and you were like, it, it, it's not that the height of it, but it's the force on which it collapses because it, it holds you under and you can't breathe. You're not Aquaman or Aqua Woman. So, but imagine now a hundred foot wave and that thing just comes down and I watched one, it broke the sh a ship. It wasn't a giant ship, but it broke it right now. I mean, so imagine these waves that came over their ship and they lost their emotional, they yielded to the soul. And that's where people lose the battle. Lots of Christians, see, they can sit in church on Sunday. I said, we can sit in church on Sunday, but then during the Wednesday, all of a sudden the devil launches that violent tempest against your mind. And you begin to think, I'm going to perish. I'm going to lose out here. I might get hurt. What's going to perish though? Just think now. All we've been saying, we'll close. Think what, what would perish? Huh? Yeah. Let's just think. I want you guys to think. I, don't, I know we went on. But no, on that boat, the waves are hitting. The boat might collapse. They could all, what would perish? Well, it's not spiritual. We are the body. The body. The body would die. The, well, yeah, that's that's a, but in that moment you're not thinking that. See that that's why that's why they're in unbelief here. I'm trying to get you guys to think. So so when you have a challenge, you stop thinking about self survival. See if you're ever going to really live in faith and dominion, you gotta you gotta die to the flesh. That's what Jesus said. Like a piece of corn that falls in the ground dies. It won't produce. You, you know, what is your life? He tells you, but a vapor. You know, whoso will come unto me, let him take up his cross. For what shall a man gain? You know, if he gain the whole world for it. So what he's essentially, it's not just talking about eternal things. The reality, you could say in that moment, they could have said, no matter what, how big these waves are and this ship goes under, we're heaven bound threatened by the loss of physical life you hear me now this is probably a heavy revelation for a lot of christians because they can sit in church and go i understand but in the midst of adversity if they're on an airplane that's going down <laughs> why couldn't you sit back and go <laughs> it don't matter I'm just going to leave my body and be with Jesus right now. I'm not worried about this temple devil while they're all screaming and crying. They're all scared. Like many Christians in America today. But they don't want to be honest. Because in order to transition to the mindset of Daniel, Nehemiah, Paul the Apostle, Jesus Christ, going to take a lot more than sitting in a church on a Sunday or a Tuesday. It's going to take you digging in that word like the people, the people here it is. I, I got to read this and we'll close in Hebrews 11 because that's my message to people. See I don't want to be around phony faith. That's why America's in the condition is in phony. I'm not saying don't go eat a pizza. I'm not saying don't get you a brand new car. I'm not saying don't get a Beamer and a, and a nice one and enjoy it and go to games and have fun. I'm not saying that. But in your deep innermost being, always realize that none of those things mean nothing. They don't mean anything. They don't. They have some significance, but they're not the totality of your existence. Look at this. Here you go. Because Jesus himself said, be not afraid of those that can destroy the body. Come on now. See, when's the last time, I'm just saying, now I could start. Pre well, well, when did you stand up in the face of the devil and go, devil, Jesus, my savior said, don't be afraid of those that destroy the body. You think I'm limited to this temple? Eternal being, my life will go on for ages. 
That's conviction. Most Christians are already like, oh, my God, that's a scary preacher. I better get out of this church and go to a preacher that teaches me how to eat ho-hos and zoom-zooms and wham-whams. And I can get a big house and a nice new car and enjoy this life. And someday I'll die and I'll see Jesus. And we'll go happily ever after. And he'll give me my big fat mansion in heaven. But Jesus will enter in me and say, he says, you enjoyed yourself on earth quite a bit. I love you. I'm so glad you're here. I love you. The tears in his eyes. And, and I love you. And I'm really glad you're here. And all heaven will rejoice. And you say, where's my big mansion, Jesus? He says, I, I live by my word. And while you were on earth, you, you, you didn't win any souls. You didn't invest. You didn't expand your life. For the, you get my point? And I'm not, it's not even about winning souls. I'm just saying in general, like you geared everything towards the earth, you know, and praise God, we should enjoy the earth. He gave it to you to enjoy, enjoy the earth. Just realize that your life has more significance. Don't be afraid of man. That's what it says, right? God before us, who can be against us, right? What can man do to me? Man can't do anything. What can man do if you ain't give a man place? Like my friend I told you with the cops. Obviously, he did that to himself. You and I don't have to do to ourselves that way. Jesus said, don't be afraid of them that kill the body. I mean, that's heavy because you and I aren't in that position. So I would hope that if you and I lived in a third world country and they came and put a gun to us like in Africa, some of these Christians, I was reading about this pastor the other day. He would, He stood. Everybody's leaving. When these Muslims came, he would not leave. They killed him. And I was just kind of praying about that, thinking about it. And I thought, well, what would I do? And then here's what I want to tell you. Sometimes you can stand when you don't need to. This, I just learned this. Can you believe that? After serving God 20 years. Sometimes you'll stand because you think it's faith. I got to stand. But really, the Lord says faith is leaving. Sometimes, sometimes, like Paul the Apostle. I learned this from Tony Cook. See, you got to be teachable. Paul was let down in a basket to escape the people that were going to murder his life. He said, I'll get in that basket. <laughs> Come on. So how do you know when to stand and how do we, you know when to get in the basket? Well, if you've been spending time with God, you would know that, wouldn't you? But if you just assume stand, like we keep the windows open. But then on certain days, we had them closed. See, we're being led. Like I told you when I was in London, I went into Home Depot. It's not Home Depot. It's called something else. But same thing. It's orange and it looks like Home Depot. So I'll call it Home Depot. And I walked in freely without a mask. But then the next day, I, I, the Holy Spirit told me to put a mask on. Follow. Learn to hone your yieldedness. Stop thinking religiously. If God played that song last week and you got a goosebump, fine. If he plays, doesn't mean he'll play it this week and you get a goosebump. Start living by your faith and dependence on the Holy Spirit. Stop living on externalities. That's where we, we are there. I believe that I'm saying, but we as a, as a body overall, amen. And we're not afraid of the devil. You know, something's supposed to happen. I was waiting on it. It didn't happen. I'm just like, okay, what, devil? You're trying to work me, man, with little fears and worries and what abouts and this about and how about. It's like, man, get up off my mind. I oppose you, see? And the minute you release your authority, that thing goes. Because that's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to work you, man. He's. He's a master who just works. He knows, doesn't he? Yeah, master deceiver. Don't fear your body. Don't fear your circumstances. Just keep going deeper with the Lord. The waves cover and go, man, this is a beautiful shower. Thank you. Thank you, Satan. <laughs> you don't got nothing bigger than this? this? This is all you got? Jesus, just keep sleeping. I got this. Speak to that problem. Jesus said, 
Where was your faith? Now, I'll ask you, is that Maria's going to come and see Dolphin? How would you feel if Jesus said that to you and I today? How would you feel? Has Jesus ever said that to you? Little faith. Where's your faith, Dave? I was doing something yesterday and I was kneeling down and praying and the Lord said, aren't you a faith person? I'm like, yeah, but I didn't say, yeah, but I just went, I am. And I started, but, but you know, the reality is, is because so, when you are living by faith, you're fighting so many different things. You've overcome, you've got the victory and maybe something, I don't know what it was, to be honest. It was something, wasn't even anything big. I was just probably crying in my mind about it. And then I was kneeling down, I was just praying anyway. And I just sensed like the Lord said, you're a faith person, right? Like, Amen, Lord. I get what you're putting down, like right away. Absolutely. So I made a bold confession. Oh, I know what it was. Oh, I woke up. I didn't feel good. I've been dealing with some stomach. That's why today, I'm not kidding. It's like food ain't going down, and it's bloating, and and it's not digesting. So I have like the proper way, you know what I mean? I went to the doctors or whatever, and then it's like I checked all these things. And, but the thing is, is I don't know if it's the foods that I've been that I ate so much could have been my lining, or or I was even thinking about that thing like Kim was telling me saying. But anyway, so uh, you know, and and I'm like I haven't been speaking to it enough, you know. I'm just kind of just letting the natural course. But it's like you've got to take authority, change the diet, take authority, you know, the intake too much cheese or too much this or too much that. And so I was kneeling down very uncomfortable and I just didn't feel like really pressing in. And then that's why I, I believe the Lord's like, you're a faith person, huh? Don't go by your feelings. I'm like, yep, exactly. So as soon as I heard that, I was like, yeah, I hooked up with that because I've been praying for a few minutes. And sometimes, how many of you know, it's like you're praying, but the door didn't open yet. You know what I mean? So, so the tendency is just to wrap it up. But the reality is, is God is saying, push push or is like one lady said what does push mean one lady said it this lady in america she's a christian leader she said it like 10 15 years ago her she said push she named her ministry push bam that's a good motto pray until something happens don't leave that posture. You can be praying in tongues, but your mind be drifted. Until your mind comes in union, then pray until something happens. And then you get that joy smile. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. And you flow in with the Holy Ghost now. Now you know you come online. That's when you have authority in the realm of the Spirit. If you have not walked into that union yet, you're still kind of, you know, one foot in and one foot out, and it's a struggle, right? And that's where I was like, eh, and the tendency is to back off. I'll read the Bible. It's not time to read. It's time to pray until you move in the Holy Ghost. Then when you move in the Holy Ghost, then you're like, hmm, hmm, look at this word. <laughs> yeah, is there Ephesians, Philippians, what am I going to get into? Oh, a little bit of Proverbs there. Mm. Whole shift in your thinking. Whole shift. This message was brought to you by Living Water Fellowship San Francisco. You can connect with us on Facebook or email us at sflivingwater.com.